So today I'm going to be shooting some wheat fields and some corn fields which are behind me now and for the job I've bought out 35mm my chin on CS camera uh, with a wide angle, we'll say wide angle, 28mm lens and I've got um, uh, the holder for my filters, I'm going to be trying a yellow, orange, red, see what I can come up with with those and inside there is a roll of Orvo um, UN5400 speed film. I've also bought out my pinhole camera because I haven't shot this for some time so I thought while I'm up here it'd be interesting to see for this particular composition what I get from the pinhole and inside that pinhole camera is a roll of Fuji Acros 102 film and have a 100 speed and the good thing about this stuff is I can um, there's no reciprocity failure on it up until about two minutes so it's ideal for pinhole photography. I've got my trusty little light meter I've also got a 50mm uh, lens there's my filters there I've got a little bit of hand gel, cable release, lens cloth, little tiny digital watch that I keep inside my bag just for timing anything that I need to. I've got my rocket blower, Vaseline and a tissue. It's not a double X rated video. Uh, a normal skylight filter. I'll show you what I'll use that for later on in the video. And uh, just in case I get mugged by a gang of rabbits while I'm out, I've got me trusty pen knife as well and the Vaseline just in case and why I like this scene this is a cornfield here you can see it's green shit everywhere up there's blue sky they've got some clouds that might complement an orange or red maybe even yellow filter but I've got this gate which sits here as well and the sun is over that way it's early in the morning the sun's kind of you know on its way up morning Hello. do you want to go past if I stand up Right, no, she knows you're a person now. Does she, yeah, in case she gets a bit scared me. Yeah, she wasn't down. sure at first. I think of course. Down, That's maybe. all right. Horses get a bit nervous if they see someone low on the floor. They don't quite make out what it is. And uh, that's why I just stood up to let that horse pass. Strange, isn't it? But, you know, you live in a countryside, you've got to respect the rules. <laughs> so the composition wasn't as easy as... As I initially thought every time I saw this scene, so um, I decided to come real low down with the camera pointing up. I've got this gate at a slight angle. There's all the green stuff, blue sky. I don't know if a cloud's going to come over, but it doesn't bother me if it does or not, to be honest with you. I'd be nice if it was one now. Just a bit of incident reading back towards the camera. So 160th of a second at f11, and I'm rating that, um, well I'm not rating it, I'm putting that film at half its speed at 50 ISO, so I intend to just knock the development down a little tiny bit just so I can uh, flatten the negative a bit, which leaves me to play around in the dark room and boost the contrast if I need to. I think that's kind of stepping on the side of precaution because with the sun out there this would be quite contrasty. f11, 160th of a second. So I just showed you that first shot without any filters, without any jiggery pokery. I'm going to keep the same composition and I'm going to run through the filters, yellow, orange, red, allowing for the, um, the compensation with the, with the density of the filters. Um, what's that? One, two and three stops, I think. Then I'll get the Vaseline out. allowed one stop for the yellow, two stops for the orange, three stops for the red and the orange and the red should darken those uh, that blue sky. Unfortunately there's no clouds but I'm not waiting around for that. Um, I'll be here all day long probably. Next up the Vaseline and the paper towel. So this is an old uh, UV filter and I'm just going to smudge some Vaseline around the edges just to see what effect it gives that's all. So this is the LaRouge 66 pinhole camera, um, very 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 tiny aperture on this and I've got a little tiny cheat sheet underneath uh, for 100 speed film in the sun it says two seconds so that's what I'm going to go for just two second exposures and that's one thing I like about using the pinhole is it's uh, you don't have to think too much just only you've got to think about your exposure the rest of it is sort of point shoot and hope really at least that's how I do it so that's going to get quite a lot in <laughs> I'll turn it in a little tiny bit. That's going to get loads in, so uh, let's do our first two second exposure. So 
So that's it, I'm done with the cornfield, simple stuff. I'm gonna go up to the wheat field, see what I can get up there. So I've just got up to the wheat field. That cornfield is right over there in the distance. You can see I've got the tripod nice and low. I'm gonna put the pin on there and take uh, the rest of the six exposures that I've got left. And with a two second shutter speed that I'm using on this, or two second opening, <laughs> if you like, these wheat things are moving slightly. So it might be quite nice. I might be able to get a little bit of motion blur in the image. Lovely composition if it comes out. So I've just plotted up the Channel 35mm camera uh, for my last few shots on the Euro. I'm going to go for no filter and exactly the same again. Yellow, orange, red, that red and yellow. Use a little bit of the Vaseline again in case those rabbits come around. So that's all my filters done. All I'm going to do now is switch over to the 50mm lens and I'm going to do some handheld stuff around here, get some different compositions. I'll show those images now. So that's it, I'm done, all my shots are done. Pino on the corn, 35 mil on the corn. Up here on the wheat, both cameras again, different compositions, there goes a the pheasant. I'm gonna get back and develop the films in uh, Acros 2 in 510 Pyro. That's uh, supplied to me by James Lane from the Zone Imaging Lab. And I'm gonna throw the Oro into, I think I'm gonna pop that into uh, Adox FX39 developer. I've started using that recently, quite like it, good developer. So, uh, and then I'll, Show you guys the next, get in the dark room. And I'm only gonna take two of the negatives from each uh, camera to make a print of. So I'll show you some of the printing in the dark room, what I'm doing. And then uh, keep looking at that pheasant, it looks tasty. So first up in the development was the Oro film, which I developed in FX39, one part to nine. The normal time for this is normally seven minutes with that film, but I reduced that time to just five minutes, like I said earlier, as I shot the film at 50 instead of 100 ISO. Five inversions to start, and then four inversions on the minute each minute. I then stopped the development using Photospeed's stop bath and then I proceeded to fix the film using Photospeed's FX20 rapid fixer for about 5 minutes in a similar fashion as the development. Once the film was fixed it was time for a wash and then a bit of a rinse aid and then up for a dry. The rinse aid just helps clear any watermarks or water residue that sticks on the film when drying. Next up was the pinhole film, the Fuji Acros 2, and I used James Lane's 510 Pyro and mixed that to one part to 100. This stuff is a bit gloopy and also not too kind to the skin, so I wore some rubbers to be on the safe side. Six millilitres of Pyro was all I needed and a good old stir to get it all mixed in. Development time on this was 13 and a half minutes and this development is a semi stand so I inverted for the first minute then I let it stand and I inverted one more time after 10 minutes and then let it stand until the clock had stopped. 510 Pyro is a good fine grain developer and has staining properties which helps preserve the highlights. After the development time I stopped the development using tap water and then fixed the film with Photospeed's FX30 odorless developer which has a less aggressive citric acid in the base. If I used stop bath and the Photospeed FX20 that would have cancelled the staining effect which I didn't want.
So I don't quite know what happened between those filters. These are the negatives here. These were the first two shots that I did without filter. I did two shots because I wasn't sure where the leader of the film was. I didn't want to half or cut one half off. So I did two shots. So that's let's come here. Let's uh that's the first shot with no filter. I'm looking at the density in the sky. That's the second shot with yellow filter, slightly darker in the sky. The orange filter, slightly darker again, and the red filter, slightly darker again. But I thought I would have seen a bigger difference, and I've used red and orange filters uh, quite a lot in the time, but not really compared them as much. But yeah, normal, yellow, orange, and red. Only a very slight difference, that amazed me. And I couldn't see a great deal of difference either when I got up to the wheat field, but um, it's neither here nor there. I've got some nice 50mm shots there to, to play around with and to choose to make a print of. And as for the pinhole shots, well, I think I completely nulls those up with two seconds. I think it was way too bright uh, for two seconds and I seem to have overexposed, but that's no problem. I can still get a decent print out of these. You can see how overexposed they are and maybe in the scans as well, you could see that as well. But uh, nice compositions, nice frames, nice photographs, negatives, a bit overexposed, but here's what it is. Pinhole photography, good fun. So I've just chose the negative that I want to make a print of and while I'm, you can see I'm holding it, I've got no gloves on, but I'm just holding it by the edges. No fingerprints again on it at all. And it's a real clean neg as well. Uh, I get asked a lot of questions privately uh, through direct messages and emails about um, stains on your negatives. All I ever do is um, wash the film and then I put a few drops of rinse aid, uh, photo speeds rinse aid in. Um, but then what I do is I don't use um, the same temperature water, just a little tiny bit, maybe a couple of degrees warmer. So I just put a little tiny uh, dab of warm water in there, but literally only a couple of degrees. Um, and then leave it soaking in there, just bob it up and down with the rinse aid in and for about a minute. And then I hang it out to dry in my bathroom uh, with the window open. I, I usually make sure that I've got all the towels and crap out of the bathroom so there's no um, lint or anything like that flying around. And 99 times out of 100, I get decent, decent negatives. There's no marks on these at all, no water smears whatsoever. So I don't even have to wipe these at all. So that's all I ever do, and just let them dry naturally. I don't sit there and, and, and put my fingers down them or use a squeegee or anything like that. They just let them dry naturally um, for an hour or so. And then when they're dry, ready to go. Just give a little tiny blow on the neg for precaution. Just make sure there's no anything floating on it and there's not so I've got a nice clean negative in there this is the one that I like out of all of them on the chin on camera it's a 50 mil lens one of those that I took where I was upside down and whatever in the in the wheat field turn the light box off I see how it looks under the enlarger and see what I can do to make a nice print out of it so I've just positioned the uh, image in the middle of this easel here and I'm printing on Kempmere's VC Select 9.5 by 12 inch paper and I've allowed for a slight border around the edge so I've got the whole frame inside that paper. So you can see there's the image, nice slap bang in the middle of the uh, paper and uh, this is the, the edge of the paper here so I've got a nice little edge for framing if it wants to be framed. So the first thing I've got to do is do some test strips and I'm going to be using a 2.5 grade filter straight off to see how the print comes out using that filtration there with this multi-grade paper and if it doesn't work out then I can start working on other filters to see how I can uh, balance out the contrast. So I'm going to use this little tiny funky machine here, this little test strip machine. I've had this for years. I um, can't even remember where I got it now but I picked it up somewhere along the way. So I've got a nice little tiny bit of paper exactly the same what I'm using. Put the test strip inside there, close the machine down and then I can do my increments by just opening up the little tiny doors. So I've just placed the uh, test strip right across the uh, stalk of one of those wheat, whatever they are, wheat, <laughs> yeah, the wheat thing, right across the stalk of the wheat. And uh, let's do my test strips. I've got the aperture set to 5.6. I'll just do increments of two seconds. One. Or should I say two? Four. Six, eight, ten, one more, twelve. So twelve seconds in total. Test strip into the developer.
so I'll quickly show you the test strips that I've been doing. Uh, this was the first one I did, two, four, six, eight, ten, and twelve. I thought four was obviously too light, the highlight's too bright there, so I went for eight seconds and I did an overall print in the end of seven seconds, which is this one here. It's quite contrasty, you've got this deep black this side, and it's kind of you know getting quite bright here on the top of the wheat. So uh, I decided to try split grade, that was my split grade, so this was um, uh, three and a half seconds contrast zero, three and a half seconds contrast five, and that was no good. So I decided to contrast zero filter in and just did a wing at 10 seconds, just wanted to see if I could fill those highlights in, and I did. So I did a larger test strip at 10 seconds on that wheat, really, that's all I'm looking for. And I'm pretty much near enough back to where I was with the two and a half grade filter. But when you put the two side by side, there is a difference. See, I didn't want the sky as dark as that, but I'm in trouble because of this highlight area. I'm in trouble because of this highlight area here, and I didn't want to start doing any burning in because I'd end up getting some halos, it's because it's too fine. So that's why I went for the contrast zero filter and it's slight, it's, I've, I've managed to pull the highlight, got some detail back in that highlight area, but it's made the image a bit less contrasty, which I actually don't mind. I think that's a bit too contrasty here. So I'm gonna try and do a print and see how it looks full size. Uh, 10 seconds contrast zero, just see how that looks. And it's all printing, it's all trial and error. Sometimes you get a hunch and you kind of know where to go, but this one is a bit trial and error. Just getting my grain back again. Grain, get it, grain? <laughs> no pun intended. So in goes the paper. I've got a feeling I need to clean this neg. I saw some little tiny minute specks on the test strips, but see how it looks. Contrast zero, 10 seconds. Off it goes. Wonder why I'm wafting, just in case any dandruff falls off my beard. That'll blow it back off. Let's see how it looks in the developer. This is PhotoSpeed's PD5 developer that I'm using. So that's really nice. I think I've uh, done as much as I can now. I've gone to the contrast zero filter to try and uh, pull them highlights back in the wheat there so it's not so, you know, white, punchy. Uh, it's lowered the contrast of the actual photograph, but the blacks are there. I can see the blacks are black. The sky is a little tiny bit lighter than it was with the two and a half grade filter. And uh, I'm happy with the photograph. We've just got this shallow depth of field going on here with the other bits of wheat in the background which is quite nice at the bottom but your main focus is going straight to the middle on uh, these little bits of wheat here that's probably where I focused on is this one here nice I'm happy with that one so this time I'm gonna go for the corn photograph that I did try and print one of those this is the one with the yellow filter and see how we get on with this I'm gonna do exactly the same procedure same sort of test strip start off with a two and a half grade and we'll see where we go from there Oh lordy, so here we go again, uh, this negative, quite a hard one to deal with, this is a contrast 2.5 filter, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, thought to myself, well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 8, I looked into the leaves, I thought, and the, and the railings as well, the gate, got some detail going on there, I thought, okay, 8 seconds, what happens if I do the same thing with the contrast 0, so I've done the same again, but with contrast 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, Eight seconds again, I thought, okay, that looks all right. I've got detail coming on in the gate, nice detail in the leaves. So I went off and did a five by seven print of contrast zero, eight seconds. And it ain't looking too bad at all. I just feel like I could maybe go a little bit, maybe a couple of seconds longer just to pull these blacks down a bit more 
and pull some more detail in that gate, then I might be happy. So in the end, I ended up doing 11 seconds with contrast zero on that. And the uh, contrast zero is just going to build up the highlights without building up the blacks too much over that period of time. So you can see I've managed to pull the detail back in the gate and it's slowly built up the darker parts of the print as well. So we can see all the leaves, all the corn, all the gate and the sky as well. Not the most fantastic print in the world, but it is what it is. But I suppose looking back at it, it was quite a tricky subject to shoot. You've got this bright sun coming down on this bright gate, which is making the, the gate really bright. Then the sky and all the dark around the leaves and stuff like that. Maybe I should have done a spot meter uh, for middle grey on the gate because it was a middle grey and then took that reading. But I feel like it would have given me the similar reading as the incident reading as the incident meter did anyway. So that's the 35mm chin on shots done. I did two photographs there, two prints. I'm now going to work on the pinhole. Uh, negatives. I'm not going to video that because otherwise I'll be in here all day long and uh, I'll show you the prints afterwards. I'm going to choose two to take a print of and I'll show you what they look like afterwards. One of the things I enjoy about coming in the dark room is listening to some music in the daytime, having a coffee, sometimes in the evening I come in here, put the music on, have a beer, make some prints, learn a little bit more about my own printing and uh, just a little bit of me time. So that's what I'm going to do now. Shut the video cameras off, put the music on, drink me coffee, make a couple of prints, take me probably an hour or so and I'll come back. So I've just finished my darkroom session. These are all the prints that I've made. This one here is, uh, well, these three were the from the pinhole. The pinhole was, wasn't hard to, to print. They were overexposed, two seconds. I may have should have gone really to, two, to one second, but uh, you live and learn, don't you? So this was the one here of the cornfield with the gate. It's okay, all the tones are there. Um, it is what it is. It's a pinhole photograph. It's actually quite a nice print. Um, it's a little bit soft focus, as pinholes generally are. And then this one here is the cornfield through the pinhole. I wasn't over impressed with this one particularly, um, but you know, it's just a little bit dark <laughs> on that one. This one came out quite nice though, this one here, um, of the cornfield on the pinhole. And there is some very slight little tiny specks on the prints themselves. And that's because for some, somehow there was um, dust that got onto the negative while it was drying. Uh, and trapped itself in the emulsion. Bit of a pain, but nothing that a little tiny bit of spotting wouldn't wouldn't uh, go without. And of course, we did the other ones on the 35 mil as well, the two, uh, the cornfield and the wheat field as well. So at least I got a bee out of my bonnet, even though the negatives didn't come out as well as I expected. And uh, the prints, they're okay. I managed to work around it in the darkroom, but at the end of the day, I enjoy taking photographs and I enjoyed coming in the darkroom and making some prints, whether they come out good or bad, you know, take the rough with the smooth. Sometimes you just can't win them all. But uh, this particular shoot, it was all right, but not really as good as I expected. But hey ho, I still had fun playing with film in the darkroom, making some prints. And as for the filters, I don't quite know what went on with the yellow, the orange and the red. I was expecting to see a much different result, even though I did compensate as the filter suggests. But um, horses for courses, all part of learning. And as for the Vaseline, I reckon that's a good idea. Maybe I should make a video just trying to get some decent photographs using Vaseline on a crappy old UV filter. I wouldn't put that Vaseline on any, any decent filters, but uh, that one wasn't that great. But um, <laughs> I only took one shot on it. Maybe I should experiment with it a little bit more. So that about wraps this video up. I'm now going to tidy up my darkroom for the next session. And thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I'll catch you next time.